As we observed in the integrator circuit with only a capacitor in the feedback path, the amplifier had infinite DC gain, causing the amplifier to saturate in the presence of a DC component of voltage in the circuit. We can address that problem by placing a relatively large resistor in parallel with the capacitor in the feedback circuit. This provides DC feedback and prevents the op amp from saturating. Let's see how that works. First of all, Z2 is going to be the parallel impedance of those two, or the combined parallel impedance of those two devices. We'll note that the impedance of the capacitor is 1 over C2S. Of course, the impedance of the resistor is just uh, R2. So we have then Z2 is equal to the product of those two, 1 over C2S times R2 over the sum of them, R2 plus 1 over C2S. Now, if we multiply numerator and denominator by C2S, we're able to clear the denominators, and we end up with Z2, the impedance there, is just R2 over R2C2S plus 1. Now, once again, the transfer function T of S is equal to Z2 over Z1. Well, there's Z2. It's actually equal to negative Z2 over Z1, so we have negative. Z2 is R2 over R2C2S plus 1 divided by uh, Z1, which is just R1. Now, we can clean this up. When we do so, we will get then that this R1 in the denominator is R1 over R1, so we can invert and multiply it, and we end up with then T of S is equal to negative R2 over R1 times 1 over 1 plus R2 C2 S. And in this form, we can recognize that this is of the form of that single time constant circuit or a low pass filter. It's of the form, um, let's write it down here, K over 1 plus S over omega naught, where K is equal to negative R2 over R1, and omega naught is equal to 1 over R2 C2. Now let's explicitly show the, the frequency dependence of this transfer function by writing T of J omega, which of course is just equal to T of S evaluated at S equals J omega. And when we do that, we get then that this is equal to negative R2, oops, R2 over R1 is the K term, divided by 1 plus, um, let's write it like this, let's write it as J omega over omega naught, the cutoff frequency, which is 1 over R2 C2. All righty, and we're interested in, of course, the magnitude of that frequency response or that transfer function. And that is going to equal, the magnitude in the numerator is R2 over R1. And the magnitude of the denominator, of course, will be the square root of 1 squared plus omega over 1 over R2 C2 quantity squared. Now let's confirm our suspicions that this is the transfer function of a low pass filter by looking at the magnitude of the transfer function when omega equals 0. And at omega equals 0, this term here goes to 0, and we're left with simply the magnitude of the transfer function is equal to R2 over R1. Thus, at omega equals 0, the transfer function has a value of R2 over R1. It's this resistor here, the ratio of this resistor to that resistor. That becomes the DC gain term. 
unlike in the past when we were dealing with only reactive elements um, and had no amplification, no active elements, um, the magnitude, uh, the the maximum value, of the transfer function is no longer just one, but it's now equal to the DC gain of this amplifier circuit. Now let's look at what happens as omega tends toward infinity. Then under those circumstances, the magnitude of the transfer function is, as omega goes to infinity, this term dominates, and the denominator is going to zero. So as omega approaches infinity, the transfer function is going to zero. And in fact, that's what we expect in a low-pass filter. Compare this transfer function to the... Uh, magnitude of the transfer function for the integrator. For the integrator, the magnitude of the transfer function was 1 over omega RC. Now, we didn't have R2 here, so the R was simply the resistor to so, um, connected to the source. But notice, we don't have the square root of 1 plus here, nor do we have a, a gain term here. And... Uh, the issue here was that DC omega went to or as omega went to zero at DC, the magnitude of this transfer function went to infinity. So this is the transfer function of a true integrator. This is the transfer function of a low pass filter. It's no longer a true integrator. We note though that the larger R2 is, the closer this will be to a true integrator. The problem with that is that the DC gain gets bigger and bigger as R2 gets bigger and bigger. So there's a trade-off here. If we want stability and don't want it to saturate, we want to keep R2 reasonable. But to have it be more like an ideal integrator, you want to have R2 as big as possible. So there is a trade-off there. Now let's take a look at the at the uh, Bode plot for these. What this is saying is that we've got a cutoff frequency in this circuit not at zero, but at the frequency 1 over R2 times C2. So the time constant associated with this parallel combination becomes 1 over the cutoff frequency. So this is going to look, well, what, what I've got here is the transfer function, the Bode plot of the ideal integrator. It had its break frequency at omega equals zero. Now, instead of that, we're going to have a situation where it's more low pass in nature. And this frequency right here is going to be 1 over R2C2. So it'll come out here, it'll be down 3 dB at that point, and then it will start to trail off at that negative 6 dB per octave or negative 20 dB per decade that we have seen in the past. So the point is, is it still performs a type of integration, which is actually a low-pass um, operation. We've never talked about it in the past, but a low-pass filter is a form of integration. It tends to smooth out the the uh, high-frequency um, components in the input signal.